Hello all. Happy Labor Day. Just a little bit of update from uh, Waverly, Tennessee, and from the spirit realms, from sister to sisters and brothers out there, all seeking your soul path. I am getting the word lately in prayer of vindication and how the Lord is coming to vindicate us. The Lord is coming to vindicate us. And vindication from the Lord is a promise. It's, it's a reward. It's a gift. It is part of spiritual law when we walk in faith with God. When we trust God, when we lay down to God's will, when we walk through the pain and the suffering of letting go, and that's unavoidable, that pain and that suffering and that all our fears coming up and feeling all of that in our central nervous system and allowing that to be touched by the great comforter that process, allowing the great comforter to comfort our central nervous system when we through the veil of fear in faith into God's will, surrendering our own will. In, that, in those moments of pain, doubt, fear, and feeling that and allowing the great comforter to comfort us. Even when we're screaming inside, the Lord is saying to me, I am coming to vindicate you. I am coming to vindicate you and remind me when you pray, come and vindicate me, oh God. And God reminds me a lot to pray that way. It might sound silly because God already knows and God's laws are set in motion, but spiritual law promises us vindication when we obey God, when we trust God, when we, um, press through our laying down of our will. It's a spiritual law that promises are on the other side of that. And vindication from the Lord is one of them. And it is a great promise. God will come in his power and vindicate us against our enemies he will vindicate and bring his will forth in our lives. He will bring his promises. He will pour out blessings. He will come through. God will come through in every way and vindicate us. We have this promise that we can hold on to. And God wants us to remind God of his promises. And so our spirits call out. Vindicate me, O oh God. Vindicate me. Come and vindicate me, O oh God, in your goodness and your faithfulness. As I allow you to shed your searchlight on my soul, and I allow you to allow me to see, as I allow you to awaken me, and a lot of times that awakening is startling. It has to be. It shakes our nervous system. It shakes the universe because both are connected. Our central nervous systems are connected to the electric universe of God. And God is sending shockwaves through our system and through this universe. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's shaking us. It's uprooting us. It's waking us up. It's waking us up. Wake up, O oh sleeper. And as we wake up and we respond to the call of God, God is coming in to vindicate us. And we're in that in-between state. We're in that in-between state of waiting for the promise. And I have had some mentors in my life who have really taught me how to thank God for the promise before it comes. That's faith. That's, that's, that's knowing the love of God. 
and for those mentors in my life, I am so grateful because that was imparted to me. And so we can thank God as we wait. We can thank God in the waiting. There is tremendous shaking going on in the earth. Um, if we were to talk about what's happening in Europe, in other nations, um, it's, it's about to roll over here, over to the U.S. We're going to see the natural sense in the financial world, in the earth, really start to shake. And we're looking towards central bank digital currencies, universal basic income that will work on blockchain and central bank digital currencies. And um, you know, some radical things are gonna happen. I believe that uh, in the next year and a half, we're going to see uh, an energy crisis that is engineered and manufactured. And I've been talking about energy for a while and an energy crisis. And why is energy so important? Because there is, there's hidden understanding about energy and about the power of God, which is the energy force inside of us and outside of us is so available to us. Um, and everything that comes at us in the world system that is lies is to deceive us out of understanding the power that God has given us in that energy force through the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, that anointing. That is part of the promise. That is part of the vindication that is coming. The anointing of God is about to be unleashed. And I do believe that it will flow through unhindered vessels. And so where there are pockets of darkness and resistance, God's Holy Spirit is doing the exposure in those places inside of us right now. And we can either be in our flesh and our kingdom of self and be like, uh-uh, I ain't looking at that. I refuse and stand up in our pride and continue in our self glorification. Or we can bow down and say, I want to see, I want to be awakened. I want to go in there with you, Holy Spirit, and allow you not only to shake me awake and shake my system with your power, but to rout out that darkness so that I can become a conduit of your power and your energy in the earth and in the spiritual realms. Let your power flow through me explosively with anointing from that pure and holy realm, the holy of holies around your throne. The kingdom come kingdom of God's within us. The Holy Spirit is routing out darkness, exposing, surfacing, showing us, opening our eyes to see. This is relevant on all kinds of levels. Where there are dark pockets in the earth, dark regions, God is exposing those regions right now. And there is an exodus bursting out of those regions where pockets of darkness, ritualistic landmarks, regions of strongholds are being shown, are being um, exposed for what they are. And they've been chosen for a long time to be these regions in the earth to which darkness can operate more strongly. And that's why there is a great eye-opening this happening in certain regions because these strongholds of darkness are being exposed. And these regions also have become places of resistance to the move of God. These places are in our bodies 
dark pockets of energy stuck in our bodies. God is routing out and healing us. Dark regions that have become so spiritually resistant to the flow and the power and the anointing of God. And I'm not being extreme in that I don't believe there are people in those regions where God is moving through them, but they're, they're regional strongholds. We're talking about large, massive regions in the earth. And this is where we will see the most shaking going on, okay? Wherever there is the darkest pockets in our bodies, in our central nervous system, in our minds, in our mindsets. Remember I was talking about, we're going to get our minds blown. The shaking will happen in the earth, wherever the regional darkest, strongest strongholds are operating to the resistance of God, we're going to see the greatest shakings. And that's why we're seeing certain regions targeted by the world system because darkness always serves light. And this, <laughs> this world system is subject to God's power and God's plan. And that's why where they will be targeting by the world system will be in God's plan to shape those regions. It will happen in the spiritual realms and God will anoint and God will appoint vessels for the anointing to flow. And that will come through the acknowledgement of darkness that will come through the passageway of darkness. The Bible speaks of treasures of darkness. That's exactly what that means. If we can understand the gift of darkness, like when God said to me, the greatest thing you can give me is your darkness. If we can understand the gift of darkness, the passageway of darkness, the narrow way where this narrow to get to the narrow gate is a dark passageway. If we can understand the secret of darkness and how we are promised what is on the other side of that darkness, we would not turn away. We would, um, <coughs> especially some of us, we would go there with God. We would go there not only for what's on the other side in anointing, but what's on the other side in liberation and freedom from our darkness. And none of us masters this, not even to the day of our passing through the veil. We do not master this. It is a constant, continual walk, humble walk with God. But God is coming to vindicate us. I, I feel <coughs> a season of vindication coming. The rewards are in his hands. They are in his train, following him. Just as mercy and goodness, signs and wonders will follow them that believe. <coughs> Vindication is coming to those who have bowed in narrow places of darkness and felt the fear allowed the eyes to be opened, looked at those things with God, and continued to walk and bow low in the humble path. We never master this and we never um, become an expert at it because our kingdom is always there. The Leviathan, the creature of the sea, <laughs> inside of our system it's you know always roaring and always wanting its way and that's what keeps us in a humble path with god and that's what keeps us out of judgment of others because we can never point a finger because we're all on this path and we can never teach these things in mastery or upon a pedestal because we are just we're walking in them and we're learning them every moment and we're falling and God's picking us up. It's the acknowledgement of that path, that humble path that brings power. 
not the projection and the denial of our own path. And that's why it's so powerful to speak about our personal path instead of preaching or teaching or projecting out to others. It's so powerful when we share from a place of experience, even in failure, even from darkness, sharing from a place of darkness. It's powerful. God has promised to bring us from darkness into his marvelous light and to vindicate us with the energy and power and the anointing of God. In this, we rejoice and give thanks. Something is coming, lots, lots is coming, a lot of things, and God will be in them. <laughs>